It's Gabriel. It's Bailey. And this is CYMK. Well, welcome to the CYMK podcast. It is good to meet you and uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us who we're talking with here today. I'm Jonelle Richardson and I live in San Angelo. I've been a, a resident here. I came to college here. Oh. In 1956, and then um, moved away for a short time. My husband was in the Navy, so we were in San Diego. But he had graduated from dental school, and then we knew all along that we wanted to come back here. Mm. So I've lived here since then. But I grew up in Rock Springs, which is 120 miles south of here. That was a small town, Mm -hmm. um, only 1,200 in the county. Oh, my gosh. uh, And my school was about 400. So for that reason, there was not a strong art project there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so my time to get started with art was actually with the encouragement and interest of one of my aunts. Excuse me, no, this is my pump. And no worries, take I'll, your time. Uh, silence it. But um, we went out on a summer day and sat under the oak trees and painted with the oils. And that was my first introduction. Oh, painted with the what? With oil paint. Oh, okay. The little tubes that you we got at the lumber yard. Mm-hmm. So that was the beginning. And since then, I've been off and on. And I'll have my 86th birthday this month. Oh, so, happy birthday. Happy birthday. So I've been at it for a while. Yes. So the, I was totally interested in this from the very beginning. And the main reason I wanted to compete was to make sure that somebody from San Angelo would would be represented Mm -hmm. because this is not a concept among the artists here. Mm -hmm. The competition? Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are not that many of us who really enjoy getting outside and painting. Mm -hmm. And in the very beginning, we had no idea that it was something other than painting outside. (laughs) But you do see things differently when you are outside. And you don't really recognize it until you've done it often enough and started working with the photo that you see the uh, problems that mm. it can cause. Like the light changing and temperature and weather, I'm assuming. Right. And- the photo is excellent for locking in the shapes of the shadows, the you know, the time of day, the type of weather, those things. But it will most of the time the shadows will appear too dark. And you lose the detail Mm -hmm. that's in them. Now, an experienced photographer, if you realize at the time that there is something worthy here that you're wanting to work with, then you can take uh, several different shots uh, and getting the light better Mm -hmm. for what you're wanting to do. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, if you can work from life, even going out in the backyard and setting up something outside there or working with a, a, a setup in your studio, but have a lot on it and work from life rather than the photograph. Mm-hmm. I use the photograph on a monitor uh, to check accuracy. But for the most part, I've painted long enough. I know what I'm wanting to capture. So, is it hard to get a lot of detail with all of that light changing? So, 
do your paintings turn out more of a quick pass over it, or do you still manage to get the detail in there? Well, what you have to do is realize you have, for the most part, about twelve uh, two hours. Mm -hmm. And also, there are certain ways to set up so you can have less change, fewer changes in what you're doing. But that's why to take a photograph when you first locate where you want to paint, that's what I meant by locking in the shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, if there was something that impressed you to the extent that you want to spend the time to set up and and actually paint there, then there that's when almost the fun ends and the work mm. begins because you have to determine so many different things to get a good source. Mm -hmm. A lot of people now uh, prefer to use the time that they paint outside for more information gathering and then do uh, more of a studio painting after they get back in. Yeah, do the extra little, the grunt work that you don't want to do right. while you're trying to capture right. in the moment. You're working to cover a lot of things, and so in the studio you can analyze it and organize it better. That's amazing. Yeah. Uh, what do you think, what medium lends better to plein air style painting well it's what you know the best fair mm -hmm. yeah because i had been a watercolor painter for years and the first couple of times i competed with watercolor wow and it did happen that uh it was very damp the morning that we had the mm. quick draw mm -hmm. and um it was that morning that I decided, I believe these oil painters have it uh, an advantage. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it does, there are um, good things about working with watercolor. But I had reached a point in my painting that I was ready to learn some new things and explore something. I had painted with oils um, a long time ago and stopped painting altogether to have family and, you know, do those kind of things. And I do have three wonderful sons with wonderful families. Mm -hmm. So I'm very proud of that. And they're all artistic. So when I did get back into it, and painting in the competition, Nancy Tankersley offered uh, a workshop, Jump Start Back to Off. And that was exactly what I wanted to do. I wanted to get back to painting that way. And with the watercolors, I've won a lot of awards. But with the oils, I haven't even entered that many things because there's so many different aspects of it. But I also realized there's a lot more competition. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of everyone in oils. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do any pastels? Or? I did when I was quite young, but uh, that is not my interest at this time. Mm -hmm. I'm never going to say I won't do it, but <laughs> uh I'm totally immersed in the oils. Right. And I paint with the water-based, water-mixable oils. Oh, how interesting. And that uh, makes the conditions in the studio much safer. Mm -hmm. um, it, there are aspects of it that are easier as far as just rinsing out your brushes with soap <laughs> and water and all. So. But also, there is a disadvantage, kind of like watercolor. 
uh, it doesn't do real well outside on a rainy day because it can wash off if mm-hmm. it gets too wet. So, but I do enjoy that. And Charlie Hunter, uh, who competes here and will be back here this year, uh, he works with the Cobra water mixable oils, mm-hmm. and I especially like the that brand. I'll have to try those. I've never tried water mixable oils before. That sounds fun. So what is the difference between the water mixable and then the regular oil? Because I've never used oil before. Well, the main thing is once the water evaporates, it is oil. It's an oil painting. Mm-hmm. But there, uh, the chemistry in the, uh, the mixture to begin with um, makes it possible to mix it with water. And you don't have to thin it with like turpentine or paint No thinner. turpentine, oh, no okay. solvent. You use, I use water to begin with and I use water to rinse out my brushes. Mm-hmm. And then if you, it was regular oil, you would use a paint thinner to wash them out? Right. Okay. Which can be fumey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I've been at the, did you go to ASU? Uh, not it, not recently, but but in, whenever you said you went to college, mm. did that have a an impact on you wanting to? Did you always know you wanted to do in planner painting, or did you have to do all of the broad classes before you realized what you wanted to focus on? Oh no, um, the classes I took at San Angelo College mm-hmm. back way back when mm-hmm. were more design and art history. The basics. <laughs> so my education as far as painting is a lot of reading and pursuing learning on my own and going to workshops with really good artists. Mm-hmm. So I'm retired now. I was a travel consultant for years. And uh, once I retired, well, I paint almost every day. My studio is yeah. right behind my house. Awesome. I was going to ask you if uh, In Plain Air got you to travel to some really fun places or if you've gotten to do things like that. No. I, when I was in the travel business, any place that I went had an interest as far as wanting to use it as a source for painting. Mm-hmm. And that was wonderful. I learned a lot more about the world. And that partly, uh, that contributes to the wonderful artists who are coming here Mm -hmm. from so many different places. And I've been totally amazed with how many from the East Coast come. Right. This is is so new, uh, this type of environment. Mm -hmm. So People really love coming to see the ranches, the the real real Texas experience. I think they really like that because they don't get that where a they're A tumbleweed? From. Some people haven't seen a tumbleweed. A cactus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's awesome. Well, the it will. It's always interesting. And then being a volunteer or part of the In Plain Air Texas, You get to mingle with the artists and learn more about them. Each year I've hosted someone. Oh, great. And that's just wonderful. So, and I'm amazed on YouTube. I watch a lot of the different programs. The artists who've been here before, I can guarantee you, whenever they're talking, almost every time they bring up about being in that's awesome. Here I in love this. that. So we get publicity about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Tell it's, me, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. It's well, the, it's really well thought of. So. Yes, it is. Yeah. Um, tell me about your experience in your uh, 2017 in Plain Air Texas event. You were you were part of the competition, right? Yes, three tell times. Us about that. Oh, okay, great. Any of the events, tell us about your experience. Well, it honestly, 
I was so naive <laughs> those, that first time. All those it's years hard, ago. <laughs> uh, ancient. Uh, it is uh, a hard week with all of the activities. And when you're in competition, the pressure, um, you're not out there just painting and enjoying it. You are working, mm -hmm. trying to get um, a good painting because you've got to have at least two good ones. And then um, to be able to display them mm -hmm. uh, on your wall. And you talk about the first time. When I went in to set up my wall, there was Jason Sacron right next to me. And he, <laughs> that was when he and, and John Lasseter were um, really doing wonderful paintings mm -hmm. and so popular. So I thought, oh, my goodness, I'm next. <laughs> uh, um, Jason is there. They were Everybody was so nice and welcoming. And that's the other thing about being around these artists. They're happy people. Mm -hmm. They're they're here working to uh this is part of their livelihood. Mm -hmm. So and um traveling around doing this is not easy. Mm -hmm. But as far as just um uh, kind of learning the ropes that first time, and I was, you know, you're always struggling with equipment. Do you have the right thing with you when you're out there working? And to having to adjust to the moment. Yes. I was lucky that I live here, so I had some idea about where to paint and what to look for, but uh, the people who just come in here cold. It was interesting. One of the things Kathleen Hudson said that she uses Google Earth. Oh. Whenever she's going to go to a new place because she likes to um, get the higher vantage points, right. and she'll scout out the area with Google Earth. That's smart. <laughs> like before and, she goes, before anyone else can yeah, see it. That's so funny. if she knew the first time she was coming here, mm -hmm. she started looking at the terrain. And so those are the things that you pick up um, just being around the other artists. But as uh, each year, each time I compete, competed, it got easier. Mm -hmm. I knew a little bit more about what to expect. But it still is a, a tiring week. Mm -hmm. My nerves would be wrecked <laughs> trying to do that. Uh, is it kind of like the Hunger Games where everyone is like for <laughs> themselves? Or if an artist like next to you needs a paintbrush, you'll lend a specific brush? Oh, no, everyone you'll, usually... you'll help each okay. other. <laughs> That's, That's good. good. Yeah. 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 It, you know, and for the most part, we're competing with ourselves mm -hmm. because what can I do um, to make this wonderful? Uh, one thing, the first quick draw that I competed in, it was the year that Mark Hansen was the judge here. There was a young man who had worked for the Streamline Push Publishing that does so many of the wonderful uh, videos for us. He had worked for them, but he was also, I guess, graduating from college. But he competed, and I think he may have been from Abilene, but uh, I'm watching him. We were both, we both won. Oh yeah, yeah, and I won the uh, the local artist, and I'm not sure what he did. But the thing that's unique about this, he is very active now on YouTube and lives in Montana, and has a family. And not long ago, I put a comment. 
that in after one of watching one of his videos that you're a long way from Financial yeah. Texas. So wow. wow. Anyway, uh, that's another thing that I would have never paid any attention probably mm -hmm. had I not had some little personal contact. Mm -hmm. It's amazing the people we get here just looking at their work. You know, gosh, there's so many amazing artists that come every year. And yes. we're excited about this year, too. Mm -hmm. So, Well, and we have more watercolors um, the last several years. That's been increasing, the watercolor artists. Uh, we have more men, new ones, this mm -hmm. year. So it's sad in a way when... The ones that we've gotten to enjoy, and they are, you know, like John Lasseter. He's now teaching his own workshops, and you finally ha have to get out of this mm -hmm. and and go on to with your life. But it's a, a very <laughs> good experience. Mm -hmm. I wish more people would give it a try. And it's not something to be afraid of, uh, but it it's just a good thing. Right. So when applying for EPAT as an artist, what do you submit? What does that three, application look like? Three paintings of um, your typical type of work. Mm -hmm. And the juror for this year, this coming year, will be the judge the next year. Mm -hmm. So um, you get have some time to get to know that person. And the lady who will be coming as the judge this not this year but next year is from the Wyoming a ranching family, mm -hmm. a long time ranching family in Wyoming. And I've seen her work, and it is fantastic. Yes. And she's very eager to get here. Yes, that's yeah. Catherine Mapes Turner. Yes. She's, she's going to be yes. a good one, good juror this year. So there's only one juror that mm -hmm. shovels through everybody and picks the right. artist? Okay. And so, of course, there's the time limit um, as to when you can enter, mm -hmm. submit your paintings. And then uh, that's when we have our envelope plays and announce who will be selected. So that'd be scary. <laughs> that'd be scary because everyone's just it'd be like the Oscars. eagerly waiting. Yeah, it's like an award show. Oh my it, goodness! It really is. Yeah. Yeah. That seems fun. So and you stay involved in EPAT by hosting artists now. Oh yes. Great. You do that every year. Yes. Oh. I, every year I oh. have. And uh, and this year, uh, Yan Hong Song will be with me again. Oh, good. He uh, was so delightful last year. And uh, Kathleen Hudson has stayed with me several, three times. And then uh, Richard Sneary mm -hmm. stayed, he and Susan stayed with me the first year. So I've known Richard from the very yeah. beginning. Oh, that's and, great. Uh, and Susan. So it's, um, and I keep in touch with them. Right, of course. So, yeah. and watch their careers, what they're doing. Mm -hmm. so. That's nice. That's lovely. The thing that I can't imagine how it would be to be retired and not have something that I was feeling passionate about. Right. Some good reason to get up every day. And frankly, some nights I'm lying awake thinking about paintings and work, <laughs> you know, and I can. Yeah. I love leaving the studio with something that, that I'm eager to get back to the oh, next yeah. morning. Yes. Yeah, it's like the reason for a living, you know, when <laughs> yeah. you have that that kind of passion in your life. I love that. That's great. 
I have taught for years, and of course I've, I've come in contact with some really interesting people in my studio. Um, I can accommodate, uh, it's a fairly large studio. And when COVID shut us down, mm. I stopped. I haven't brought people back like I had before. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, it, and I've gotten selfish about it because I've enjoyed the time <laughs> sure. yeah. to uh, paint myself. But I also recognize that how good it is for me to have people around mm -hmm. and they view my studio kind of as a sanctuary. That's uh, great. Just to be able to escape whatever they're doing. And it's been proven that if you have um, an obligation to go and be somewhere and paint, then you're that's when you're going to paint. Mm -hmm. We all find reasons otherwise to be busy with other things. And Procrastinate. Uh, right. Yeah. You don't have the uh, support mm -hmm. from the your people who are like-minded. Mm -hmm. You know, our family love us, and they'll tell us what we want to hear. <laughs> they don't get it. They don't get it. <laughs> But if you can associate with people of like mindedness, yeah, and uh, I've heard more than I've experienced it. If you're going to take a trip and you want to paint, don't go with someone who doesn't paint, right? <laughs> because it will be harder to stop yes. and do things. And I have never felt more inspired to create than after I go to an art show or hang out with my art friends and they're working on something. Right. So you're so right in that. Yeah. 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 I keep um, a grab-and-go bag. Oh. And it has, and I really haven't worked on this enough, but um, not uh, recently, I tested it to see how well I had uh, packed, and sure enough, I didn't need anything. I just had everything I needed, opened mm -hmm. it up, and I have watercolors and gouache in that. Uh, that's easier to just leave packed, but... Mm -hmm. That in itself is another thing that is real important. Even if you don't have a studio, if you can have an area that is your space to be set up, and it and that way you're apt to go ahead and paint than if you have to completely set up every mm -hmm. time. And that is one of the reasons that I started painting with watercolor when my children were like junior high. Because with watercolor, I could paint. It wasn't toxic to have. At that time, I didn't have a studio. It was in the uh, in the house. I painted in about every closet <laughs> in the house. Um, but that way, if I could work a little while, but then if I needed to take them to soccer practice or something, just wash my brushes out, cover the palette, and be gone. Mm -hmm. Whereas with oil, whenever you're wanting to paint, then you're making a commitment putting it out because two or three days um, is the, the optimum time mm -hmm. to work with the paint. Mm -hmm. So there's so many things to learn and tricks, but still just have to work with what fits your lifestyle. Right. So what medium do you use? I do like oil and I like acrylic. Um, and I've never tried in plain air 
or plein air style. So it's definitely on the bucket list. Your stuff try. is so realistic. And so I would love to see you a quick draw. That'd be I'm I I'm I fear I'm too controlled and uh in plain air is just so loose and quick and I'm slow and controlled. So I, you know, it would be a, a fun challenge, I think, to mm-hmm. try. Well, whenever you want to come over and, <laughs> and paint oh my gosh. with me, I would love to have that you is come. so I'm nice saying. of you. Thank you. In the studio or like I said, um, oh outside Mm -hmm. or we do wind up down here on the river in various places another thing that i love is the equipment Uh i love gearing up Mm -hmm. and through the years um i've gone through a good number of different styles of equipment and you learn what works best for you And I've been able to simplify mine enough and years of actually backpacking Mm -hmm. has helped me in many ways. But I have reduced all of what I need to about 15 pounds that I carry in my backpack. Keeping in mind your canvases and everything? Yeah, I have it with me. And I used to have a rolling cart that, you know, it had my lunch. It had all kinds of extra things in it that I might need. But now, if I'm out and working with something and it doesn't work just right, that's the first thing when I get back home. I start working, okay, what do I need to do to to correct it? Mm -hmm. But I can, I love to share those kind of tips and ideas about with people. Anytime that I feel that I can help someone get farther along with doing the fun stuff, (laughs) that's what I want to do. You're like a mentor. That's great. Yes, I love that. Yeah. And, um, And I'm serious when I say I love to have people come and um, just get together and paint. Yeah, that's great. Gosh, thank you. Do you all go paint outside or do you stay in your studio? Either way. Awesome. But I am part of the PASA group that meets the third Monday of the month at Miss Hattie's. Mm. And that is our purpose is to get outside. And paint, and we. It's always hard to find a time that will accommodate the most number, Mm -hmm. and we've just recently switched over to painting on Tuesday morning, and we during the really hot weather, uh, we went to the several uh, Alice Nursery, uh, various places, even Gallery Verde. We copied paintings from it. Oh. So just trying to get together, and there are all kinds of ways to learn. Right. And But there again, having the support of like-minded people mm-hmm. is the fun thing. Mm-hmm. And are you planning to do the quick draw? No, no, I'll be around for throughout the week, but that's yeah. I would love to see the others do the quick draw. That's well, what I want to do. Um, that is fun, and you have to be organized to do it because you've got to leave time at the end to get that thing framed and up to get it in line to show it and the paperwork yes, and all yes. of that. So there's a lot to so many of those are so emotional and just because they're they work so quick and they get those little strokes and lights and shadows it's they're, they're great paintings but you out know what when you're under pressure you're not thinking about all those little details oh. and uh, if you've never painted outside you really 
need to come do it because and and sit and I do this even at home sometimes. I set my timer and one day uh, I had a student in the studio and I set up something. I said, okay, I've got 30 minutes. The timer's set. And so I painted this little um, teddy bear that my son had given me. But my student couldn't work because she was watching me paint. <laughs> <laughs> and um, But I got through with it. Wow. And one day I had um, signed up for a group to paint, uh, post something daily that had been done in a time limit, a short time limit. And one time I went to the grocery store and bought carrots that had the tops on them and all fresh carrots. And I took it to the studio and hung it so the carrots were hanging down. Oh. When I posted that online to that group, one response was, I didn't know carrots could dance. <laughs> but it oh, was lovely. that type of thing that when you're under pressure, you it's almost like the information is mainstreaming. Mm -hmm. You're focusing so hard that um, you do accomplish a whole lot more. And the thing uh, with the timer is you shouldn't make it the objective to complete a painting. Mm. Do it as well as you can, as much as you can. And then when that timer goes off, stop. Yeah. And you'll be amazed. I'm sure. Gosh. It, it's amazing that you guys get out and do that. Yeah. Daily or weekly or gosh. Do you ever do a <clears throat> sorry, do you ever do a sketch before you do the quick painting or before you have a timer, or do you just go in it with the paint? It depends. Mm -hmm. If what I'm seeing uh, has good organization and I'm satisfied with it, well then because it's not going to turn out to be exactly like it anyway. Mm -hmm. Uh, but if I'm having to rearrange things and organize, the last time that we went out to the chicken farm not long ago, I chose to do part of the building. Well, it took me way too long to get the drawing correct. Mm -hmm. And... I got enough done, but that's the type of thing that, um, depending on the amount of time also that you have, I um, should have just taken a smaller portion mm -hmm. of that building. But that's kind of the hindsight and all. But um, yes, sometimes I do. Um, if I, Another thing which is not allowed in competition is with the cell phone, you can take a shot and then change it to the black and white. Mm -hmm. That way you can see the light and the shadow patterns uh, to know right quick mm -hmm. whether you like your image or not. I didn't know that wasn't allowed in the competition. Can't use the camera. Okay. In Good. the competition. Okay. Good to know. Um, now, they can take a photo, you know, but to stand there and use the camera, it's also um, kind of touchy about uh, working on it after you have left the area. Mm -hmm. You'll hear some say, well, I need to come back tomorrow and finish working on this. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is um, 
those are the things that are important to know in advance mm -hmm. that let's don't break, break any of those rules. Has anyone ever gotten disqualified from EPAP that you know of? Not that I know of. Inside secrets. Yeah. You can tell us. <laughs> What's the gossip? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, not that I know of. Mm -hmm. that, but they may have been uh, spoken to mm -hmm. otherwise. So, or it, you know, it's published. Those kind of rules are published. Yes, so. yeah. And we have a, we always really have a good group of, they're not going to just go make a ruckus for no reason. Yeah, they're well-versed <laughs> in the rules, you know. Yeah. Well, and the number of newbies usually is fairly low. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they would be pretty much like I was, you're wide-eyed trying to see what's <laughs> going on around you and understand it and ask questions. Do you remember where you painted when you were during when you were doing the competition? Mm -hmm. What kind of locations did you? Those paint? are the kind of things that is another advantage of painting outside because you don't forget right. where you have been. Or, like I said, when I painted with the watercolor, that was over at the fort. Mm -hmm. I was painting a window, looking through the window, and. Uh, that uh, very wet morning, mm -hmm. though, no, I re remember, you remember those yeah. kind of things. The, you just, you're solidifying a memory. Every painting is just mm -hmm. like an experience. There was a family stood and watched me that morning, and they wound up buying the painting, but oh. it was actually the daughter who wanted the painting, and uh, and I have that family has purchased three different paintings. Oh, that's nice. I had a fun a fun uh, occurrence. There is part of the competition, uh, the pearls, the whatever they're the mini, mini pearls. pearls, mini pearls. And that's different. Mm -hmm. And so you do a little six by eight or so for that. Well, and mine was hanging on the wall. And when I went in, I had, there had been, a, that was in a crowded place over in the fort. And um, I didn't rush right in at the beginning. And so, but when I went in, Mine was not on the wall. And so uh, Tom and Fran Gregg are the ones who are in charge of that. And I went up to Tom and I said, where's my mini pearl? And he said, well, I don't know. It was there when we <laughs> put it up. The person who, an older woman, wanted that painting and she just took it off. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> she paid and, for it or? and took it to have to pay for it. Oh, um, and, oh my uh, gosh! And so, anyway, I did get to meet her <laughs> sometime later. Not that time; it was the next year. Uh, I found out about that, and she was here. She mm -hmm. wanted so, it so bad; she just yanked it off. The so <laughs> that's the kind of thing you remember mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. Uh, we've been down on the river. Uh, people come, stop by, and talk with you and things. So, mm -hmm. But that, there again, uh, you don't get as much done, but you're sharing that moment. Mm -hmm. And hopefully you will make it a pleasant time. And maybe later they'll get interested mm -hmm. in it. So. Absolutely. What kind of questions do they ask you whenever they see you painting on the bridge or at the fort? A lot of it is about the medium or about the equipment or why are you painting this scene mm -hmm. or, you know, just um, people who will 
take the time to come out and uh, they are curious enough that they will stand there and watch you paint, but they may have a question or so. But I make it comfortable for them to ask me a question mm -hmm. if they want to. And this is one of the things that um, the artists uh, on Monday, I think they can go anywhere they want to. Um, on, but on, and this information I know is available online. Yes. And it's also, uh, we need to make it obvious where they can uh, uh, access this online. Mm -hmm. But on Wednesday, they'll be downtown, Concho, that area, and uh, the car show. Mm -hmm. Yes. The, um, the ranch, the people purchasing the tickets to go out to the ranchers is a very popular thing. And uh, the ranch this year is the Door Key Ranch. And that was one of the ranches we painted on oh. last time when I was competing. Wow. Shelby Keith was here this, some of the same years. And Shelby's going to be back this year, too. Yes. So it will be wonderful to see her again. It will, yeah. Um, and I'm then gonna meet all these artists, and then I'll say, "I know a lot about you." Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I know you don't know who I am, but I've heard stories. Well, um, and that's another thing by uh, accessing the information about the artist, then it makes it more fun if you're downtown watching them paint mm -hmm. to have a little idea of what they're doing um, and I always stop and talk with them because I've been a competitor uh, Barbara and Treva they decided to make those of us who needed to retire <laughs> and, but because we do know what's going on, yes. then we're the ambassadors. Yes. And so it, uh, I have uh, fun being able to go up in a little bit different way to take them water or snacks or right. whatever, you know, to if they need something. One year, uh, an artist from the Houston area had just, he was in the process of setting up over at the train station. Mm -hmm. And there was something about his uh, tripod that was either broken or he had forgotten it. Mm -hmm. And he was saying, oh, I need, he was perplexed about what to do. And I said, well, what do you need? And he told me, well, I went to the hardware store and got it for him and, uh, you great. know, came back. But that that is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. If there's something that the artist needs so they can continue working, whatever. Or if people are wandering around, if I can get them shuttled over to someplace yeah else. so that's great awesome but that's my responsibility at that so i take it we'll be seeing you around for this week's epat we be around looking for artists and helping out and running yeah. to the hardware store and <laughs> <laughs> whatever that's great oh yeah. well gosh we've had such a nice conversation yes, with you, you today would well, you have any last minute advice for any upcoming artist or anyone who wants to dabble in watercolor or water oil? Give them my name. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> She's got loads of advice. Name and address. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I'm serious. 
if um, the, I think the thing that you have to, first of all, determine that, you know, I've heard about this thing of painting outside and how good it is. I'm going to do it. Mm -hmm. And the quicker that you have skills that you know about painting, your colors, your uh, brushes, and those kind of things, um, you do need to have a little bit of expertise in that area. Uh, and then just bundle together a few things and start going out and giving it a try. And keep it simple. We tend to see way too much. Mm -hmm. And the thing that I want to help people is to not set themselves up for failure. Let's take it a few steps at a time. And if I can answer questions or make suggestions with equipment and those kind of things, I'd love to do that. Mm -hmm. I'd love to have any of you come and paint with us. So, Awesome. That's great. Gosh. Well, thank, thank you, you so much. That, um, And I'm serious. We need to keep people painting. Yes. yes. I'll take you up on that. <laughs> I've been wanting to go painting outside. And yes. right now is the perfect weather. It's yes. so great nice outside. Here. And the colors are changing. It's wonderful right mm -hmm. now. Yes. So. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today. Well, I've enjoyed it. Awesome. So thank we. you. I mean, yes. When I was um, a travel agent, I enjoyed having people come to me because I could talk about something that I knew what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And I kind of feel that same way with this. Um, I had enough experience that it's brought me so much joy. Mm -hmm. And I would, I want to share it. It sounds like you do a good job of sharing it with everybody. So, that sounds that's great. Very good. Thank well, you. Well, thank you for having me. Of course. Yes. Thank you for joining us.